Hi, my name is Mark Leichner from MMACoach.net and today we are discussing the guillotine defense. I'm going to teach you how to defend the guillotine once your opponent's arms have, be, have closed around your neck, uh, once he has gotten you into a guillotine grip but he hasn't actually put you in a closed guard. That can be either from a snap down or from a do failed double leg. What you are just seeing is my student defending a guillotine, a standing guillotine attempt by a very strong wrestler in competition and we're gonna get back to this fight later. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna get on our knees, put our hands on the floor and have our partner take the guillotine grip on us. This is just an exercise, we're not sparring yet and we're gonna jump over his leg which is the opposite leg that's uh, opposite of the hand that's guillotining us, of the arm that's guillotining us. So he's doing this slow, I'm blocking his leg as you can see and I'm jumping over to the other side. This is really important. You have to jump over to the opposite side of where your head is at. So from this angle he takes the guillotine Make sure you get the opposite leg. The opposite leg is, what's is, is the leg that matters. Next, you squeeze your knees tight towards his thighs so he doesn't regard. You can also basically do the double leg from here if you can get both of your hands and drive sideways. This is important, driving sideways. Let's see that again. You will also see my partner doing the same thing as I tried to put him in a guillotine always aiming for the opposite leg. Now you will see my jump that's a little bit different than the previous one where I jump up and switch the legs mid-air. The jump doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to get you to the other side, opposite of where your head is at. And now you stabilize position by uh, bringing your knee in tight, by uh, grabbing his lat and then pressuring him with your shoulder, shoulder to throat. This can, this can uh, be very, very effective. Uh, he can actually release the grip. You can help it. You can help him by pulling on the grip, but he can actually release it all by himself. But uh, if you're not careful, he can roll you over if you're not in balance. So you have to be very stable with your foot, if, with your feet, meaning you, that you need to have a wide base. Now I have a wide base, so he cannot bridge me over. And if he's not careful and if he doesn't release the guillotine grip from bottom side control, he's gonna get choked. This is called the Von Flew choke and it doesn't happen very often, but it happens, actually it mostly happens with beginners, but uh, advanced people can, can get caught in it as well. And in case he has an arm in guillotine and your arm cannot reach around his back, you can put pressure on his plexus and in time he will let go. Make sure you do these exercises lightly as your partner is not trying to really guillotine you, but he's only there for you to practice the escape. So he's going to grip you around the neck and go for guillotine, but not too seriously, not with the full conviction of choking you out, but lightly. This gives you an opportunity to practice the escapes. And the better you become, the more he can increase the pressure and then he can try to go at it more seriously. And we do that in segmented sparrings. More about that later. Now let's go to a standing position. So how do we uh, escape from the guillotine attempt when we try to double leg our opponent? So uh, we're going to do this from the same stance situation. I'm lefty and he's a lefty. So what usually happens when, I, uh, when he goes for the double leg, I'll show it. He goes for the double leg. I stop the double leg. Maybe I put, pull my hands back. I get him into a guillotine. Then I either snap him down and then I go and finish the guillotine or I jump to guard from this position. Either way, uh, this is a common uh, defense against a double leg, so we need to know how to stop it. So the, the, first, thing, the first thing that people do wrong is they, uh, they put their hand, heads down when they go for the double leg like this, which makes it easier for him to get the double uh, to get the guillotine. Also, they use a crappy stance. They use a crappy stance like this, bent bent back like that, head, uh, and it's it's no good. What you want to be using is a nice athletic stance, 
and hip up. Like this. So get your guard up. I'm just going to enter. I'm not going to take him down now. This is harder for him to get the guillotine. See, he has to, he has to use his arm and his shoulder to put my head down. I'm not saying it's impossible for him to get the guillotine from here. It is possible, but it's much, much harder. So, the first one is to have your head up. This will allow you to cut the corner, which is the second mistake people do. They sometimes take people down straight. I'm going to take him down really slowly and he's going to guillotine me afterwards. They take people down straight without creating an angle. They do this. So they fall straight into a guillotine. I'm not saying that taking people down straight with a double leg doesn't work here. Of course it does. GSP has made a career out of it. But uh, he has a very explosive shoot, takes people uh, you know, off balance, takes, him, takes them straight down. It's possible, it's still a good double leg, but you need to know what you're doing. Don't put your head down like that, it's dangerous. Uh, and uh, create an angle. People don't create an angle. When you do create an angle, when you have a head up, it's it is so much better. I'll show you. So I'm shooting in. It can be a high double leg or a low double leg. I don't care. When you create an angle, it's it's a totally different thing. So when you create an angle, how can he guillotine me now when he's off balance? This, another thing that's great here is that this leg is important. He needs to whip this leg around my back to finish the guillotine. Now, he's balancing on it, he cannot do it. And I just take him down. Even if you get caught in a guillotine, it's not the end of the world. If I shoot in for the double, uh -huh. shoot in for the double and he has a guillotine, no, no, no troubles. Uh, you have to be, wait, you have to be mindful of this leg. This is the most important leg. Come, come back. If he goes down for the guillotine, go down. This leg here, it's the most important, one of the most important uh, parts of the guillotine. If he gets it over, so it's the opposite, it's the leg on the opposite side of my head, where my head is trapped. I need to clear this. So if I end up in a guillotine, when I shoot, be aware of this leg and start driving sideways. Come, come here. So if he's gonna try and guillotine me from here, I keep this leg here. I can, I can do this too. I like to hook it if I can. The more the better. Now he goes, does he? He goes for the guillotine, go. I don't let him, I don't let it, I don't let him, and I go to the side, until I, until I clear. From here, when I go down, there are things that you can do to escape the guillotine, uh, but we're not going to cover this. So, head up, get the angle, clear the leg. These are your uh, tips, these are the most important things that you can do not to get caught in a guillotine. But what if the double leg failed and you got snapped down like my student did here in this fight? What happens then? You are then in a very tight guillotine hold in the stand-up. What should you do? I suggest grabbing his wrist, pushing him to the fence or to the ring, ring ropes and then placing your knee on his outside, on, on the outside of his leg, which can maybe result in you dumping him down with a single leg or doing some other kind of uh, takedown. So the first thing you need to do is grab his wrist to relieve the pressure. You can also place your chin as down as possible. But if he starts pulling on your neck, this is a time for you to start climbing up and relieve even more pressure. This is a very difficult situation for a guy that's being guillotined, uh, that's being guillotined in the stand-up. And one of the ways to relieve pressure is by either by placing him to the cage, driving your opponent to the cage, but when he starts to squeeze tight, then you have to jump up. You grab around his back and jump up to relieve pressure. 
This is what happened to Pavle, who was one of my competitors back in the day. And he was fighting this Croatian monster wrestler who got him in a very tight standing guillotine. And Pavle was able to survive the guillotine, but unfortunately not win the fight. He survived the guillotine by climbing up. So his opponent was uh, uh, squeezing very, very tight, exerting himself a lot, but he couldn't finish Pavle. So whenever he squeezed tight, uh, Pavle was climbing up and that's how he survived the guillotine. Eventually his opponent realized that there was no chance of finishing the guillotine, so he took him down. Next we're going to do uh, a segmented sparring, meaning we're going to spar just in one segment. In this case, in the guillotine grip. The goal of the bottom guy is to escape the guillotine and the goal of the top guy is of course to finish the guillotine. The bottom guy voluntarily offers his neck to the top guy, the top guy squeezes and then the bottom guy gives uh, his ok for the segmented sparring to begin. This was over rather quickly but uh, they will do it again and you will see that he will offer more resistance this time. They will again go into a position, this time with the other hand around the neck and then he gives his ok to start. Now he's climbing up, defending the choke much better this time and the, the, the top guy is wisely putting him down on the floor, getting his leg around and trying to choke him out. This is a very tough position for the bottom guy as the, the big guy in the, in the orange shirt is a very good uh, in, in guillotines. So yeah, he taps out, the bottom guy taps out and you can also do this type of sparring on the ground. Same thing, you're on your knees this time and you're giving your neck to your partner to catch and you're giving a start sign by tapping on his thigh. In this case I'm jumping over but the top guy, previously top guy, is holding to his guillotine grip tight which is what's he, what he's supposed to do and we're back to square one. I'm not tapping out here, although he tapped me many times, I'm just uh, showing my guys how uh, that it's important to to concentrate on the on, on the far leg, on the leg that's opposite of the side where your head is trapped. When you do these type of situational sparrings, you can do them f uh, for three minutes. For example, for three minutes I will be defending the guillotine. I'm willingly giving my neck to my partner. For example, first on the, the on the right side, he tries to tap me out. If he taps me out, we continue on the other side this time. Or if I escape, we continue on the other side as well. We do that for three minutes and when the round is over, I start again. This time, I'll be the one doing the guillotine and he'll practice defense. If you like this video, like it and share it. And you can also subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to take your MMA training further, check out my instructionals. My name is Mark Leichner from MMACoach.net and I will see you again very soon.